a new episode of MT5. Today I explain the snitch race and all the seeker's actions. Enjoy! As you can see, today the small board is on the table and there are only two players. This is because I'm going to explain you how the seekers are trying to catch the snitch. As you maybe know from the books, the snitch is really important because it gives 150 points to the team of the seeker who catches it and it ends the game in this board game here. It doesn't really matter with the points because you will never get enough goals to go over 150, so the rules simply say the player who catches the snitch and this player's coach who wins the game. Unlike the other players, the Seekers do not play on the pitch in the middle, but have those 25 yellow golden spaces around the board. And I'm gonna start with the beginning, because that seems like a good place to start for this video. In the beginning, the both Seekers are on the first, space and the golden snitch is on the last, the 25th space. And during the game the seekers will uh, advance further on the track and the snitch will advance further into their direction and the first seeker that is on the same field as the snitch wins the game. And also at the start of the game you will reveal three cards from the snitch deck. And over the course of the game, players will take some of those cards, but there will always be a new card revealed, so that there are always three open cards. Like all other players, the Seeker has a player card as well, with the actions they are able to take. But unlike other players, you can't simply take them for the actions in your actions block on the tactical cards you played, but you can only take those seeker actions if a snitch cards allows you to do so. So now you see that snitch cards are really important and we are going to look how to get those. There are three ways to get snitch cards. One is via tempo tokens. When you get your fourth tempo token, you have to immediately spend all those four tokens to get one snitch card. You also get a snitch card when you score a goal and both coaches get one snitch card at the end of each game sequence. When looking at one of those snitch cards a bit more closely, you see that there are three sections. Those are called the impulses and they are basically three groups of effects and you will get one of them with the snitch card. The first effect on the top is called the Rush Impulse. The effect group in the middle is called the Fast Impulse. And in the bottom, the strongest effect is called the Perfect Impulse. When you get a Snitch card, there are two ways to deal with it. You can either take it as your card in play, that means it's you take it and uh, put it face down in front of you to combine it with the next snitch card you get or if you don't have one already in play in front of you you can use the rushed impulse as i said this is the effect on the top side of the card if you already have a card in play and you get another card you have to combine those two. When doing so, you look at your card that you already have in play and you will get one of the three impulses. And which one you get is determined by the symbol at the top of the next card you take. So if we look at the three symbols on the cards that are revealed, you see that the one in the middle is the same as your card in play and is an additional time 
at the bottom, that means if you take the card in the middle, when you have this card in play, you will get the perfect impulse. If you take a card with the symbols in the middle, you get the fast impulse. And if you take a card that has the symbol that is none of the three that they are on this card, you only get the rush impulse. So with the three revealed cards, it would be usually not a good idea to take the right hand side card as your second card, because you will only get the rush impulse. If you take the left hand side card, you will get the fast impulse. And if you take the middle one, which would be recommendable, you get the perfect impulse. Now let us see what all the effects are that are on the cards. And the easiest effects are the snitch race tokens. Those are either dice tokens with a plus or minus and a color, or upwind tokens, which are represented by the little flag tokens in the colors of your team. No matter which kind of token you get from the effect on the card, you always place it between the snitch and your seeker. You can't, however, place it under the opponent's seeker. If the seeker who is behind on the race passes over a token or the snitch passes over a token, it is removed because the snitch can't go back and the seeker which is behind can't go back, so they will never get into effect and would only obstruct the players. What do those token mean? If you land a move exactly on a dice token, you get this token and place it on your Seeker's card and you or your opponent, if it's a minus token, can spend it on one of the next rolls, just as they would work for other players. Or if it's an upwind token, and again, if you end exactly on it, and it is one of the opponent's colors, as it is here, you go back one space, or if it would be one of your own color, you advance one space. And after this, you remove the token. Now we get to the really important stuff, the Seeker's Actions. There are four, even though there are only three on the cards. Accelerate means you advance on the snitch race. You take a roll with the dice which are indicated on the card, and for each success you go one space. Let's make an example. Ferenc Hicks accelerates, rolls three successes, moves one, two, three spaces. The action which is not on the card is Dutch, which functions exactly as Accelerate, with the addition that if you land on a Snitch Race token, either a Dice token or an Upward token, you can ignore it, which mostly you will do if it's a Minus token or an Upward token from the opponent. The second action you can take is Obstruct, you can only take it if your seeker is lagged, which means he's behind in the snitch race. In this case, the Ravenclaw player could perform an obstruct, but the Slytherin player must not. Obstruct is the same, you roll the dice which are indicated on the card, and for each success you move the rival's seeker back on the snitch race. And the fourth action is Glimpse, and again you roll the dice, and for each success, in this example 2, you move the snitch two spaces towards the seekers. On the snitch card there are different versions of those actions. 
if it's simply the name of the action, you do exactly what I just explained. If there is a plus and additional successes beside it, you roll and then you add those successes. But if there is a number beside the action, you do not roll at all, but you simply assume you would have rolled that many successes. So if there is an accelerate 3, you don't roll, but simply advance 3 spaces on the single trace. And there are two special type of cards which are in the snitch deck, and I will explain them briefly. On one hand, there's the golden snitch card, which if you reveal it, tells you to perform a glimpse action with the seeker of the coach who revealed this card. So you roll with your glimpse value and advance the snitch for each success you rolled, and then you immediately reveal a new card. The second special card is the slipstreaming card. You can only take it if you have no card in play, because you cannot combine it with the card you already have. But when you then take your second card and you already have the slipstreaming card, you always get the fast impulse, which is the effect in the middle of the card. And before resolving this effect, you get either an obstruct tool or an accelerate tool if your seeker is lagged. So the slipstreaming card is good of the coach which seeker is behind in the snitch race at the moment. Now I want to do some small examples. In this situation, the Ravenclaw seeker is only one space away from the snitch and let's say they don't have a snitch card in play at the moment. Then if they take a snitch card and they have this card available, it would really make sense to simply take the rush impulse, accelerate, roll and hope for at least one success and win the game. Now let us say we have this situation and the Ravenclaw player already got this card as his card in play. And then we could either take the card that fix our symbol, so we would get the perfect impulse, or we could take the card in the middle to get the fast impulse. And in this situation I would argue that the fast impulse would be even better than the perfect impulse because our seeker is not lagged, so we can't obstruct anyway. If we dodge free, we will not land on our upwind token and we can only place one more minus orange die token. However, if we take the fast impulse, we can accelerate. There is a chance we go free, which would be just as good as the dodge free for the perfect impulse. Or if we get two successes, we land on the upwind token and get to three anyway. And we can place a new upwind token in front of us, as well as a orange plus die token. Last example, let us say we got this slipstreaming card as our card in play. And we get another card for Ravenclaw. And we choose this card. Because our seeker is lagged, we first perform obstruct two. Then we can do the fast impulse, so dodge 3. We ignore the opponent's upwind token. Then we do a glimpse, which is Lila Black Black for the Ravenclaw Seeker. Row 2 successes, so we advance the snitch 2. And then we can place another upwind token. On the snitch race. After we resolve those effects, we reveal another card. Oh, it's a golden snitch, so we do a glimpse again. 
no success, so the snitch doesn't move. We discard the gold snitch card and reveal another one. This was the whole snitch race explained. I hope I explained it in a way so that you got it. If you have any questions left, feel free to comment and I will try again to explain it in another way. Until then, enjoy my videos and enjoy the game.